Rolling. All right, guys, today I want to show you how to catch the deepest bass in your lake, wherever you fish. Right now is winter time, January, and it's a great time to learn how to fish offshore. It's a great time to learn how to fish deeper. And obviously, fishing deeper is always relative to whatever your body of water is. For me, in the body of water we're fishing today, um, anything 20 foot and deeper is what I would consider deeper. Now, if you live in Florida, it could be 15 foot, it could be 10 foot. I've caught smallmouth, I've caught spotted bass at home, even here in Texas, I've been using the same baits that I would use back at home. Same colors, I didn't change anything. Show you, I'm even gonna show you what to look for on my graph. So you have a, 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 a good starter kit. This is gonna be your starter kit to catch some fish deep. It's all about finding bait fish. Bait fish is the biggest thing when you're winter fishing. Food, they're just like us. What do you want when it snows in? If you, especially if you live in the south, as soon as you get some snow, what happens? Everybody rushes to the grocery store and they get something to eat. They get the bread, they get the milk. I'm about to show you what the bread and the milk and the eggs is for bass. It's always some type of shad presentation. I promise you this, if you don't remember anything else that I tell you in this video, in the winter time, if you have a deeper lake, a reservoir, anything where you've got abundant structure in 25 to 50 feet, look for bait. That is key. If you find the bait, I promise you, you will find some fish, okay? It may not be the biggest fish in the lake, but you will find the most fish. They follow food that time of the year. Try to get it. Hopefully that's a five pounder right there. Maybe that'll be a five pounder. Gotta be one good one here somewhere. He got that sucker before it hit the bottom. He got it. He got that sucker before it hit the bottom. So my um, my baits are pretty simple. I like to keep it simple because this what, I'm, what we're talking about today is it's mainly about finding the fish. Yeah. I prefer for this to use braid to fluorocarbon setup. The reason being is we're gonna be fishing vertical, right up under the boat. And when I'm dropping my bait down, braid just comes off the reel so much more fluidly than straight fluorocarbon. Sometimes when you're when you're using straight fluorocarbon or straight mono, you get quite quite a bit more line twist and it just doesn't come off the reel as fast. It's going to be really important because when I see a fish on my locator, I need to be able to get my bait down immediately. I can't, I can't be fumbling around with the line. I need my bait to get down immediately. And the braid will let it get down a lot quicker. All right? So 10 to 15 pound test braid. You can use anything from 6 to I wouldn't ever use anything bigger than 12 pound test for this. I'm using 10 because it's Sam Rayburn and I could catch a 10 pounder at any point or I could catch a 10 inch spotted bass. But 10 pound test is good for where I'm at now. At home, it's more of a six and eight pound test because we have smaller fish, we have more pressured fish, and we have clear water. So you gotta make the judgment call on what pound test you need to use. There's no lateral on the pound test or size line. It's all about the conditions, the species, water clarity is a lot of factors that you have to consider when it comes to choosing your line size.
come out. A lot of people think that fish go dormant yeah. in the wintertime. They kind of lay around and be lethargic. No, they do not. They eat, all right? So my baits are going to line up accordingly to bait fish profiles. So this is just a minnow style bait. This is called a streaks, a senate, senate jerk, not a streaks, it's called a senate jerk shads, but it's basically streaks. You can use uh, streaks or that, depending on the type of species you got in your fish with, you got small mouth or large mouth. We have large mouth here, so they, they'll eat bigger bait. So I'm gonna use the bigger jerk shads. And I'll rig it a couple different ways. You can rig this guy on a drop shot, but the way I really, really like to rig it, the way that I've been fishing it here at Sam Rayburn is on a straight up jig head, like that, right there. Now, this jig head right here is called the Finesse Eyes. Finesse because it has a lighter wire hook, which is gonna allow us to use it on lighter tackle, which will be important, I'll talk about that in a minute. But the eyes, Finesse Eyes, comes from the eye that you see on the bait. That can be key, especially if you're in a clearer body of water. Details become more important. All right, so that's my number one profile. All right, and I'm gonna fish it just like this. And this is gonna be my setup right here. I've got one already tied up. This is my favorite six stick B-Lat series, my signature rod that I designed to do just about anything you need to do finesse with. I've caught redfish, trout, bass, striper. Like, I've caught everything on this rod. It's the perfect size, perfect power, it's the perfect everything. What I'm gonna do is I use a two or 3,000 series reel this foot, this rod is seven foot one, medium heavy power, all right? A lot of people say, well, why would you use a medium heavy power? Well, powers of rods aren't lateral across all brands and medium heavy power and, and the favorite brand is a pretty soft rod, okay? So and if you're not using my signature series, which I don't know why you wouldn't, but if you were, and your brand of rods, it may be a medium power. But in my rod series, the medium heavy power is a pretty soft rod. Two to three uh, three thousand size reel. You can use straight fluorocarbon or mono. I prefer for this to use braid to fluorocarbon setup. The reason being is we're gonna be fishing vertical, right up under the boat. And when I'm dropping my bait down, braid just comes off the reel so much more fluidly than straight fluorocarbon sometimes when you're when you're using straight fluorocarbon or straight mono you get quite quite a bit more line twist and it just doesn't come off the reel as fast It's easy how you work this guy. When you put him down, I just like to let it go all the way down to the bottom. I don't like to, even if I see fish up suspended, I like to reel it up to him and run it all the way back down to the bottom and just shake it. Sometimes you want to shake it pretty violently. Sometimes you just kind of want to hold it. It just depends on the day. That's what you got to figure out. You got to be the fisherman. I'm actually gonna Texas rig my drop shot 
You can also nose hook it too. For you guys that don't know what nose hooking is, let me show you exactly what that is. And I'll, I'll show you the baits that I'm gonna be using as well. There's really two or three baits that you guys can use. Uh, going with what I said earlier, I really, really like to stick with shad profiles a lot of times. So this is just a smaller version of what I showed you earlier. So this is a Streaks 375 minnow style bait. This is the bigger jerk shads. Can you see how the size in comparison, how this one on the top is a lot bigger than the one on the bottom, smaller one, all right? But I like to use this on the, on the drop shot and I typically nose hook it. Let me get, uh, get the hook that I like to use. I typically use a number two, number two size drop shot hook is what I like to use. And I'll nose hook this particular bait. And I also have another bait that I'll use at times too. So I'll take a number two drop shot hook. This is actually not a number two drop shot hook, but the purpose that I wanna show you guys that don't know what nose hooking is, I just wanna show you what that is. So if you're familiar with fishing with live bait, a lot of times you'll hook a, uh, a live herring or a shad, you hook him in the nose, it's pretty much what you're doing. Keep in mind, this hook is much bigger than what I would normally use. I would normally use a number two, but I'm just, this makes it easier for you to see what I'm doing. This is a two aught wide gap. I wouldn't use this for nose hooking, but it's so much easier for you guys to see what I'm doing and understand how this works. I literally just take the point, go on the underside of the bait and just barely hook that plastic, right? And you want this bait out here free as a free bird. You want him wangling and dangling and showing his butt out the back. You want him doing the, you want him doing, what's a good dance move, Cameron? You want him doing the moonwalk? You want him to do, what's the, the Dougie? <laughs> you want him to do the Dougie? You want this guy dancing as much as possible so when you shake your, you want him free. This is the soft plastic that I like to use here. This is called a long shots, six inch drop shot worm. And on the long shots, what we're actually gonna do is I like to Texas rig it. Again, now you'll notice something really important. Look at the color. Look at the color, shag color. This color is called smelt. See how this looks white? They're almost always feeding on shad. They will feed on crawdad, but I promise you, if you find shad, you're gonna find some fish. Now I'm Texas rigging this guy. The reason I'm Texas rigging it is because I'm gonna be fishing in a brush. I don't wanna hang up and be breaking off a whole bunch. So you'll notice with this worm, it's got pretty much a triangular shape to it. Cross section of the bait is triangular. And what I'm gonna do, you can rig it with the flat side down you can rig, rig it with the V down like a bass boat, whatever one, whichever one you like to do. I typically rig it with the flat side up because when you Texas rig it, the flat side holds the hook better in my opinion. I... Got it. Small one. Actually, maybe not. Might be a good one. Yeah, that's actually must be a pretty solid one. Oh, yeah. come up with this you find the bait get you a couple of two or three is that that's like six a couple of two or three get you a few baits you got confidence in fishing vertical is fun you can catch a lot of fish you can catch a lot of different species and it's a different way to catch bass if you want to see another video on how to catch deeper fish in your body of water just check out the next video check out my fishing electronics playlist or you also can check out, I got another playlist for DB, electronics playlist on my YouTube channel. All those videos are gonna help you understand how to catch fish in deeper water in the winter time. And it's all gonna, also gonna help you learn how to use your electronics. If you wanna see more detail about what the fish looks like on the screen, how to use your electronics, what to look for, check out those playlists on YouTube. I'll put them in the comment section, I promise you. You'll start to get a lot of confidence 
and catching them in 30, 40, 50, 60 foot of water. 